Amnesty International, this supposed human rights organization, is under pressure in Thailand. There are activists who want Amnesty expelled from Thailand. Now people are saying, why? Why would you want to kick out a human rights organization? Aren't they defending uh, the rights of ordinary people against abuse? And the answer is no, that's not what they're doing. They're a foreign organization operating in Thailand, advancing Western foreign policy under the cover of advocating for human rights. And oftentimes they do it in a very obvious one-sided way where the opposition backed by the US is defended by organizations like Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch. And when the same US backed opposition carries out abuses against other people in Thailand, these organizations are silent. And so this is not human rights advocacy. This is a politically motivated agenda dressed up as human rights advocacy. And this is why Thai people want them out. Uh, but I want to make a stronger case than that. I want to show you what Amnesty International is for real. And this isn't some anomaly here in Thailand. This is what they do all over the world. There is a pattern of abuse of their human rights advocacy that makes it very clear that they're not a human rights organization. They just pretend to be. Let's go to their official website. This is who we are. Amnesty International is a global movement of more than 10 million people. And they never qualify what they mean by this more than 10 million people. Is this people who have sent their emails in over the years to subscribe to a newsletter? Is this someone who gave a one-time donation and now they're members for life? I mean, what, what is this? How do they qualify that? They don't really say. And they're saying they take injustice personally. We are campaigning for a world where human rights are enjoyed by all. Now, right now, the worst type of injustice that I can think of would be one country completely occupying another country and not leaving. That's what the US is doing right now in Iraq and Syria, just openly occupying these two countries with its military. Uh, in Iraq, the government has repeatedly told the U.S. to leave, and they won't. And so uh, when we go to the homepage, what do we see? Well, we see them complaining about Afghanistan and the Taliban, who the U.S. was fighting. So I think you already see that Amnesty International is not going to complain about the U.S. or the U.K. or France or Germany or any of these countries actually carrying out the worst injustice around the globe. In the 21st century they are going to pick on countries and groups that the west is opposed to including the taliban now is the taliban committing human rights abuses i don't know to amnesty it doesn't matter they are an enemy of the west so they are an enemy of amnesty whether they are or they aren't or whether there's other more important issues to talk about or not their agenda is defined by what is most expedient for Western foreign policy. Take a look at Suzanne Nosol, Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for International Organizations. Uh, here she is behind the uh, podium as a member of the US State Department. And then what does she do? She goes right over to Amnesty International. Amnesty International USA announces leadership transition. Susan Nozel selected as new executive director of human rights organization. And so if you're wondering why Amnesty International parrots U.S. State Department war propaganda, it's because literally the exact same people uh, saying it at the U.S. State Department come over and repeat it at Amnesty International. It really is that simple. Let's go to finances. Finances and pay, who finances Amnesty International's work? And they say most of it comes from individuals the world over. I, I don't know if that's true because they, they're not very transparent about where they get their money from. For example, there is no easy to access list that shows where all of their money comes from. Why would you do that? If you have nothing to hide, why wouldn't you openly list who all of the organizations and companies are that are funding you because you have something to hide. And I'll show you what they're hiding here in just a moment. Let's, let's look at another little uh, very funny thing that they say. We neither seek nor accept any funds for human rights research from governments or political parties. And we accept support only from businesses that we have carefully vetted. So this entire sentence is a lie. For a fact, they have gotten money from the UK government from the European Union, and they have gotten it from foundations run by literally convicted criminals. So uh, let's take a look at this article from 2017. The Irish Times, 
Amnesty International ordered to return donation from billionaire George Soros. Standards in Public Office Commission deems 137,000 euro donation in breach of law. So there was a referendum taking place in Ireland. Amnesty International was organizing uh, a movement to influence the referendum and the Irish government said, you can't do that. It's a breach of Ireland's campaign finance laws. It prohibits foreign donors making donations to groups involved in elections or referendums. And George Soros is not an Irish citizen. And so George Soros pumping in tens of thousands of euros into Ireland to influence a referendum is obviously a breach of Irish, Irish law. And it is obvious foreign in interference in Ireland's internal political affairs. How do people not understand this? And not only did Amnesty International accept that money from George Soros, they refused to give it back, even though they were blatantly violating Irish law. And think about this. Amnesty International claims that they're fighting for human rights. One of the most fundamental human rights of all is self-determination. And Amnesty International is violating the Irish people's self-determination by allowing foreign influence, to allow a foreign individual and his organization to pump money into a referendum and influence it. So in this case, Amnesty International isn't upholding human rights. They are violating human rights. Now, what about George Soros? He's not just a foreigner. Uh, he's also a convicted criminal. This incident in Ireland was in 2017. This is from 2005. Let's take a look at this uh, Washington Post article from 2005. Soros's conviction upheld. A French appeals court upheld billionaire investor George Soros's conviction for insider trading. Soros has acknowledged he knew about a Paris financier's plan to take over Societe Generale in late 1988, but he denied that knowing about the raid influenced his acquisition of shares in the bank. It's just blatant insider trading. Uh, the court saw completely through it, uh, convicted him, and then threw out his appeal which ironically he made on the grounds of human rights. So do you see how human rights is not just being abused by Amnesty International, but also by people who fund Amnesty International, like George Soros. So uh, Amnesty, let's go back to this. We accept support only from businesses that we have carefully vetted. So, I mean, everyone knows George Soros is a convicted financial criminal. If you were uh, working on a referendum in Ireland, trying to influence it, and you were taking money from someone not from Ireland, you knew you were violating laws, you knew he was a foreigner. So when they say carefully vetted, they're lying, which means everything else here could be a lie. It means everything else here could be a lie. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you some examples where Amnesty International has obviously lied let's go to this one right here 1990 it seems like a long time ago but let's take a look amnesty international accuses iraq of atrocities in kuwait the united states was trying to build a case for war with iraq they were staging hundreds of thousands of troops uh, along iraq's borders and the borders of kuwait and they wanted to go in and they wanted to expel iraqi troops from kuwait and push them deep into Iraq and possibly uh, take over Iraq, invade and occupy Iraq. This, this was what they were talking about doing. This was Desert Storm, 1990. And so in order to help build a case for war, as we know, the US lies. And who helps them tell these lies? Organizations like Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch. This is their actual function to help advance Western foreign policy and by, by doing it through telling lies regarding human rights issues, things that will impact ordinary people emotionally, uh, people who don't have the time to look into this and research it. They trust Amnesty International because their, their website, their story, their claims all sound legit and people don't have enough time to dig into it. So Iraqi forces in occupied Kuwait have tortured and executed hundreds of unarmed civilians. Why would they do that? Some of them children. Why would why would Iraq be just executing children for no reason? It's just pure war propaganda. Arrested thousands of others and cut off 300 premature babies from hospital incubators, according to a report released here today by Amnesty International. Again, why would Iraqi tr troops go into a hospital for no reason, just 
take premature babies out of incubators. Why would they do that? They wouldn't do that. And of course, they didn't do that. And we know that because the same Washington Post uh, repeating this lie uncritically that Amnesty International told and provided no evidence at all of uh, was debunked two years later. So this is from 1992, the Kuwaiti incubator hoax. And you see, this is the thing that organizations like Amnesty International and newspapers like Washington Post do. They tell the lie when it does the most damage and they walk back from it when it's too late, when it when the war is already over, when the dust has already settled. They walk back when people aren't even paying attention. They push the lie and then in retrospect, they claim, oh no, we never did. When, when it's fully exposed, oh no, we never did that. No, you're, you're, you understood us wrong. And then in this, at the same time, they'll be lying about the next thing. So here, this was the next thing. Uh, thorough investigation urged over Libya rape case. Uh, this is in March. So in, in March 2011, the U.S. was again getting ready for a war of aggression. They were building a case for war against Libya. And so they just asked organizations like Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch and many others that the U.S. government itself funds to make up a bunch of lies. So uh, some of the lies were that... Uh, there was all of this rape going on in Libya. There were there were rape squads where Gaddafi was giving out Viagra so they could rape 24-7, rape everything in sight. And of course, it's not true. It's completely bogus. Uh, so, but this was in March. Amnesty International is telling these lies in March. Uh, March is when the U.S. finally felt it had consensus and launched its war and began destroying Libya. And then, oops... By June, when it was already too late to stop everything, Amnesty says, oh, maybe there wasn't all that rape. Oops. Amnesty questions claim that Gaddafi ordered rape as weapon of war. Human rights organizations have cast doubt on claims of mass rape and other abuses perpetrated by forces loyal to Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, which have been widely used to justify NATO's war in Libya. So do you see what Amnesty did? They helped justify the war. They helped spread war propaganda. And then once the war was well on its way, they walked back away from these lies that they willfully told. What is Amnesty doing? In Thailand, I'll tell you what they're doing. If you follow Amnesty Thailand, their timeline, you will see that uh, in Pattaya, when these US-backed anti-government protesters attacked a Russian expat, simply for disagreeing with them verbally, they attacked him, they bloodied his nose, Amnesty was silent. So was Human Rights Watch. When protesters threw a bomb at a police officer and blew half of his face off, Amnesty was silent. And when protesters shot a police officer in the head, leaving him in critical condition, Amnesty was silent. They didn't say a single word about it. What are they doing instead? They are demanding the Thai government, this foreign funded organization is demanding the Thai government release these prisoners who all violated Thailand's defamation laws. These people were abusing other people in Thai society, mocking them, insulting them, lying about them, smearing them, defaming them, and now they're in prison and Amnesty wants them out. So as a matter of fact, they're not upholding human rights. They're demanding that these U.S.-backed agitators have the right to abuse other people and deny them human rights. So this is why Thai people want Amnesty International out of Thailand. It's why a lot of people around the world want Amnesty International out of all of their countries. Amnesty International is a Western organization. It should be based in the West and it should bind the West's own business. The West has no shortage of human rights abuses. Uh, U.S. President Joe Biden is organizing this summit for democracy right after he just got done slaughtering an entire family in Afghanistan, and then he's gonna make a list of countries he says are democratic. And if you're not on the list, you're on democratic. This is what Amnesty should be taking a look at. You know, this country that presumes dominion over the entire planet, decides who is and isn't democratic, uh, decides who lives and dies in a country thousands of miles away from its own borders. This is what Amnesty should be spending its time and energy doing, not minding the business of other countries and just by coincidence, doing everything in its power to advance U.S. foreign policy, which is in actuality 
the greatest source of human rights abuses on earth today in the 21st century. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing, it's free to do and it helps the channel grow. I have a website, newatlas.report. You can find and follow all of my work there. Uh, bookmark it, share it with others. There are no ads, there is no paywall, and there never will be. I'm also back on Twitter for the time being, at Brian underscore Berletic. Check the video description for all of these links. Read it for yourself. You won't believe what Amnesty International has said in the past and then how it tried to walk away from its lies once, they, once it's all been exposed and everyone's wise to them. Uh, see it for yourself. Also in the video description are ways you can help support my work. To everyone who already is, whether it's through Patreon month to month or through one-time donations, thank you so much. I could not do this without that support. I, I also greatly appreciate people who are sharing my work. If that's all you're doing, that is also a huge help. Thank you so much. And as always, thank you for watching. <music>